Hello everyone, my name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. Thanks for joining me for Preston's Ponderings. Well, we are taking a look at the issue of the millennium. Some viewers have asked that I comment on Revelation chapter 20, 4 and following. The issue of the millennium is really, really a perplexing issue to many, many people. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that I've got all the answers, but the answers that I'm going to share with you fit the biblical datum, the biblical evidence, better, better than any other paradigm, better than any other suggestion that I have ever seen. You know, some people believe that the millennium began with the personal ministry of Jesus and expands or spans until the end of time. There are even some partial preterists who believe that the millennium began in A.D. 70. We'll take a look at that issue a little bit later on, uh, ever so briefly. But the most common view of the millennium is that which is held by both the amillennial and the postmillennial view that say the Christian age is the millennium and it comes to an end at the second coming of Christ. Of course, our dispensational friends differ with that, telling us that the second coming of Christ occurs at the time of the beginning of the millennium. I believe all three of those views are false. And I am sharing with you just a little bit of the evidence. Let remi me remind you of what I shared with you in the very first segment in this study of the millennium. That is in my brand new, newly revised and expanded book, Who is This Babylon? I have a very special segment strictly on the millennium. You're going to find some absolutely dynamite and dynamic issues and material in there that you won't find anywhere else. I believe there are some answers to some of the issues about the millennium that are definitive and they are determinative and they are powerful. You can get a copy of that book on www.eschatology.org or www.bibleprophecy.com. Well, again, we're taking a look at the constituent elements of the millennium. The issue is, when is the millennium? My proposal is that the millennium spans the period of time from Jesus' Jesus's personal ministry until immediately prior to the fall of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, which time Satan was loosed uh, to work his nefarious ways. Then he was destroyed at the coming of the Lord in A.D. 70 after that, quote, little while of being released from his being bound. We're doing this by taking a look at the constituent elements of the millennium found in Revelation chapter 20. The first element was that during the millennium, Satan was bound. Point number two, Jesus bound Satan during his personal ministry. The second constituent element that I want to share with you is that in Revelation chapter 24 and following, uh, chapter 20 verses 4 and following, the, the saints, that is these are the martyrs, are seated on thrones. This is royal imagery. They are made kings and priests, in other words. Uh, well, we'll get to the issue of the priest in our next segment, okay? But the point of fact is, they're raised up and they're seated on thrones. Now, does that qualify? Does that match the time from Jesus' ministry until the time prior to AD 70? Well, all you have to do is look at Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 and following. Now, I want you to notice, Revelation chapter 21 and following, John sees the martyrs that are raised up. This is a kind of a resurrection. He saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the word of God. Okay? But they're raised and they're seated on thrones. Here's a kind of resurrection, if you please. Now, notice in Ephesians chapter 2, 1 and following, Paul says, You who were dead in your sins and trespasses, has he made alive? Well, is this resurrection some kind of a resurrection or not? Very clearly so. Notice verse 5 now. In verse 5, And you, Paul says, he has raised us up together with him, that is with Christ, and seated us together with him, in the heavenly places. Now this goes directly back to Ephesians chapter 1, 19 and following, in which it says that God, through His mighty power, had raised up Christ and seated Him at His right hand and given Him a name which was above every name, whether in this age He said or in the age to come, and gave Him to be head over all things to the church, 
which is his body. Now, notice what he says. God had raised up Christ, seated him at his right hand. He had enthroned him. Now in chapter 2, he, he is writing to the saints and says, You were dead. See, Christ was dead. You were dead. God raised up the Christ. He, you, you he raised up from the dead. He raised up Christ and seated him on a throne in the heavenly places with a name above every name. He raised you up, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You see the perfect constituent elements here? The, the precision here cannot be ignored. So, constituent element number two of the millennium is that during the millennium, you have the saints who are seated on thrones. Now, in our next segment, we're going to show the direct parallel with being given robes. All right? Be looking for that. So, again, constituent element number two, during the millennium, the saints are seated on the thrones. These are th uh, crowns. These are thrones of royalty. They are seated on crown or on thrones of royalty. And Paul, during his personal ministry in the first century, said that the saints were seated on thrones with Christ in the heavenly places. Now, unless we can dichotomize between the thrones and the ruling with Christ in Ephesians and chop that off and divorce it from Revelation chapter 20, then we have the saints in both passages seated on thrones, ruling with Christ in the heavenly places. That means the millennium existed in the first century prior to AD 70. We'll take a look at some more constituent elements of the millennium on the flip side. Thanks for joining me for Preston's Ponderings.